Right, hey guys, welcome to another video. Now today I'm talking with Lucy. Uh, she's studying a PhD in nutrition and cognition. Did I say that right, Lucy? Said it right, yep, at some point. <laughs> yep. See, I might as well have a diploma myself. I'll just give so, you my PhD. As soon as I've finished it, I'll give you the credit now. Scribble your name out and put mine on there, and then I could be Eddie Hall PhD. There you go, there you go. So Lucy, all the new tests and markers with the Mudo kit that's come out, um, a big subject at the minute is mental health, and I know you want to sort of go through some subjects today, so let's go straight to it. Yeah, so in the new sort of part of the new immunity mode that we're doing at Mudo, we've now got the mental health, which goes through like five or six different aspects of mental health in terms of whether you're a workaholic, um, oxytocin genes, um, whether you're a warrior or a warrior, so there's loads of different genes. So Chris has kindly given me your genes. They're a, bit, they're, a, they're a bit big. I don't think they fit you, my jeans. Oh, they'll be fine. It's fine. I'll fit in one leg of them. So, um, a couple of the ones that really stood out to, to us uh, at Mudo um, were your FOXO3, your COMT, and your OXTR genes. So, I'm going to talk about the OXTR gene to start off with, which is the oxytocin gene. Um, oxytocin is known as your cuddle hormone. So normally if you give someone a hug or you do feel those that like love feeling for, for someone, it's because oxytocin is higher. Now in you, you've got the heterozygous um, variant of this, which actually means you're less empathetic towards people, particularly when you're stressed. So yeah. does this resonate That's with you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I, I've always struggled with empathy, um, even with close family members. Uh, so yeah, I, can, I definitely reconcile with that, definitely. Weirdly, yeah. <laughs> so at least you've got an excuse for it now to say that I, it's because I'm stressed, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna not be empathetic towards you. It's, it's in my genes, I can't help it. Yeah. So you've, yeah. Got, you've got a nice excuse now. <laughs> Within your COMT gene, which is known, uh, what we class as the warrior or worrier gene. Now you've got the typical variant, which means you're mixed. So you're not overly fight or flight and you're not overly like, um, mellow about everything and it's particularly involved within dopamine as well so sort of that reward sense so if you are winning at something you're tend to go you're going to be one of them people that some days you might feel really motivated towards that reward and some days you probably don't so like you pick up a trophy from world's strongest man like what's your normal response to that it's just you're not yeah. going to be a you're yeah. not going to be above you're not going to be below yeah yeah i mean um Something actually, it's in my book actually, it's something I actually suffered with is uh, obviously I spent all these years chasing that, that special title that meant a lot to me. And when I won the title, I got, you know, it was like a, an overwhelming euphoria, you know, like literally on top of the world, felt amazing, felt like I'd achieved everything I needed to in life, felt really content, you know, the following days felt great. And then straight after that, I had a really bad sort of drop in, in mood and depression, anxiety. And I think it was just that, that it's obviously, and, it, and this is recorded with a lot of elite level athletes, especially Olympians, is that that massive high, you know, they get that gold medal at the Olympics and the next day, whether they like it or not, they've got to go back and take the kids to school, do the shopping. And, you know, you, I suppose it's, end of the day, this is what, I know this is a bit crude, but end of the day, everyone has to sit down and take a shit like everybody else. And it doesn't matter what you do or what you win in life, you are still that person at the end of it. And I suppose that's a that's a hard thing to take for a lot of people is you always want to be on that high pedestal and it's hard it's hard to keep there. Yeah, it's hard to go from being on top of the world to just, oh, I'm a normal person again, straight afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, so that totally makes sense. It totally makes sense from a genetic point of view and obviously from like the elite side of your performance where you've come from as well, which makes, it yeah. makes total sense. So the last gene that we're going to look at, well, 
uh, the main one that sort of stuck out is your FOXO3 gene, which again, you're heterozygous for. So he uh, heterozygous means you've got one of one and another of the other, and your alleles, so you're sort of like mixed between them. And it means that you have improved oxidative stress and improved insulin sensitivity. So FOXO3 is sort of potentially one of the longevity genes that we have. So you were a little bit gifted in the sense that you might live a little bit longer because of this oxidative stress. You're not going to respond too badly to all the pollutants and the environmental toxins and stuff that we have. And also, obviously, generally day to day, we produce a lot of oxidative stress through normal metabolism, which for you will be quite up there because of probably how much food you eat as well and how much training you do. But your body is a little bit better at protecting you from that. And the same with insulin sensitivity as well. So you're under chronic stress, we will release glucose in order for the body to get into that fight mechanism. Now, if you are stressed, it means that your body's going to tolerate that glucose much better because you're more insulin sensitive. So again, it's, it's giving you some really good protective factors there. Yeah, oh, that's good then. So just to keep, just to keep in mind, you, you're not too bad. You're not empathetic when you're stressed, but your body will protect itself. So, so it's got its perks and, uh, and, and non-perks, I suppose. Yeah, a little bit more selfish in terms of your genes. That's what they are, that's all. Yeah, awesome. not a bad thing. As long as I'm aware of it, it's what I always say to people, you know, it's having the... Tr I've always said I've always had a very sort of narcissistic trait and I'm, I'm fully aware of that. And it's just been... I always said to people that it's, a, it's an okay trait to have as long as you're aware of it. And you learn how to sort of control that. And uh, empathy is one of those things. Like having to, I mean, one of the one of the worst things I went through uh, was actually with the wife. I mean, the wife uh, she lost a, lost a baby through an ectopic pregnancy. And this might seem so weird to a lot of people, but I, I just really it didn't phase me at all. And it obviously really upset the wife. And I re I really had to put myself in that zone, like try and put myself in her footsteps, try and understand her feelings and emotions. Because for me, it was just. A real, a real sort of like a brush. Just let's just move on, you know. Next day, sort of thing, and and that makes sense. Like, and I always wondered why am I like that? Why am I very just very passive of big life events? And I've just I really struggle with empathy. That's a big problem. Yeah, it is in part of your genes, and obviously your genes that you've got in other aspects mean that you are a very determined individual, which means that you are technically going to put your goals at the forefront and everything else kind of drops back and that that we see that a lot in elite athletes anyway that yeah. they are that on top of the game that it is it is about them and to be honest it should it should be that but then obviously you've yeah. got these genes as well that are now incorporating into that and making it more difficult for you to actually be that empathetic person towards it yeah I mean, it all makes sense in terms of all the other mental health stuff that we've got on the app, we look at a lot of sort of workaholic genes. So whether you tend to be like a bit of a lazy couch potato or whether you are going to be that really driven person. So you have got that gene which says that you are technically a workaholic and you will work more, either whether it's in a physical goal, a social goal, an actual work-based goal. You within your genes are going to drive towards that. Does that... Yeah. sound like you yeah definitely yeah definitely nothing else matters some days it's uh above anything yeah definitely and it's, it's just part of the genes that you've got so again you've got that more gifted more rare form of the workaholic gene which is, is something that i've got as well so i'm a, a workaholic and not a night owl so i'll yeah. work continuously for like 12 hours through the day and then as soon as it hits 9 p.m i turn into a potato yeah <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> as long as that on switch is more than the off switch, that's what I always say. It's okay to, to like you know crash and watch TV and just you know, as soon as you hit the couch, you're dead. As long as that on switch is more on more than the off, that, that's what I always say. So yeah. Yeah, I think one of the problems that people have, especially when they are a workaholic, is the goal is so in front of the mind that they forget to rest. Actually. And we see yeah. this a lot with people who have sort of anxiety traits where they feel bad if they rest. You know, if they're not physically doing something or not mentally doing something, they feel really bad for it. And then that drives yeah. the more workaholic state within them. And they just so, totally struggle to switch off. Yeah. Yeah. And in, and in turn, yeah, in turn, that's obviously going to make them worse at whatever they're doing. Okay, so we'll, we'll switch off sort of more from the genetic side and we'll just touch more on the mental health and the anxiety stuff. 
which you've touched on there, obviously, with the experiences with the ectopic pre pregnancy with your wife. Um, obviously, you struggled there with the, the empathy side of things. But we want to talk about how you deal with any anxiety traits that you have, sort of what you feel when you're anxious, and it'll hopefully give you a few little tips and hints and stuff on how to deal with more of those anxiety side of things the psychology side of things and also from a nutrition side of things okay so how, how i deal with anxiety yeah so we'll start with if you feel anxious where do you feel it what happens symptomatically the the only time i get anxious is when i'm like overloaded with work and i just feel i, I honestly feel like i've got like a huge weight on my chest mm -hmm. and i get short of breath and I suppose the only way to sort of like cure that is just to sit down and almost meditate and almost just like control your breathing, think about nothing else but your breathing, even, even if it's just 10 minutes. And for me, that will just reset everything. And then I can get up and just be like, right, you know, been a bit of an idiot. That's how you always feel after anxiety. You just feel like you've been an idiot. Um, and you know, it's just a natural reaction. We all have them. Uh, so yeah, for me, breathing, um, and I think, Food-wise, I, I think like stimulants can make me worse, like caffeine, coke, you know, Lucozades and stuff like that, anything that's got any sort of energy kick in it, like a pre-workout. I tend, tend, tend to sort of steer clear from that sort of thing because that makes me feel awful. It'd be good for a short, short period, but then when you start getting that, that sort of chemical imbalance afterwards, it doesn't feel good. Oh, massively so. It's to do with the stimulant side of it. So obviously when you're anxious, your sympathetic system is stimulated, which is why you get that heavy feeling on your chest. It's because your heart's beating more. You've got a higher blood pressure. It's trying to pump stuff around the body in that fight or flight mechanism, which is why when you then take a stimulant, you're overstimulating the chest, which is going to increase your heart rate further. But it's yeah. while you're doing your breathing, it then activates the parasympathetic system instead which helps us to rest digest really relax and stuff um, and that's why it'll give you clearer thoughts if you can just sit and control those those breathing mechanisms for five ten minutes however long it takes for you to get into that like rhythmic breathing side of things it really pays dividends to you yeah so just a yeah. little, little bit of science behind uh, why there's some anxiety traits within us he said in terms of your diet um obviously we can consume caffeinated products and stuff like that and it will increase potentially our anxiety traits now you've changed up your diet a little bit haven't you within your new training regime have you noticed that mood or anything has either gone up or down within these new diets i'd say i'm generally feeling better within myself uh in terms of like steady energy but i've turned to a lot more like slow release carbs uh, a lot more fruit a lot more vegetables so i am feeling a lot more sort of switched on with all those sort of things energy levels feel good the other thing i will say is is like i'm a training regime is very like i'm doing a lot of a lot of training i'm training sort of doing three hours strength conditioning um and i and i was boxing pretty much every single day um and then stretching and physio and foam rollering and doing like chirotherapy treatments there's all sorts so very occupied all the time probably from 7 a.m till 8 p.m at night every single day i am like it, it th this is my job you know just like lifting weights getting bigger getting stronger getting fitter um so i must say like my body feels drained more so than it ever ever has done but at the same time i feel so good within myself so it's hit and miss hard to tell when you're training so hard if you get what i mean oh yeah difficult as well when everything's just constantly on you and obviously you've got big fighting stuff coming up pretty soon so it's a massive goal that obviously you've got to do but in terms yeah. of your diet you've probably improved your diet somewhat that you've improved your gut health and that's potentially why your mood is okay because obviously your gut is your second brain you know yeah. from the vagus nerve from the gut up there we have this bi-directional communication so most of your serotonin the happy hormone is produced in the gut by these enterocomaffin cells so if we feed our gut nice things, like the fruits and vegetables, the more the slow right. digesting carbs, we are feeding all those beneficial bacteria that help to make our serotonin. Hence why we're, we become a little bit happier within ourselves. So is that why fat people always tend to be happier? Because they're always feeding the gut good, good food. Yeah. <laughs> Just loving life because they can eat ice cream all the time and they don't yeah. care. I, 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 can, I can feel that. I can feel that one. 
I won't lie, I've had about four ice creams today already because of this weather. Oh, same here. <laughs> You've got to. It's so rare that we get some nice weather in Britain, so embrace yeah. it. So you said there that you have such a hectic day that you're literally going from 7 till 9 p.m. at night. What is your switch off routine? How do you actually manage to then rest, digest and actually get some sleep, which is so important for our recovery? So for me, you know, I'm sort of starting to wind down from probably half five onwards. So from half five, half five onwards, it's, it's basically getting good fluids in, good foods in, it's stretching, it's foam rolling. I'm in my jacuzzi. I'm doing my sauna in my, in my cold pool. Um, so basically that's how I'm winding down and that, that's sort of my switch off is doing the recovery side of things. You know, just sitting in a sauna, staring at a brick wall, as boring that, as that may sound, it's actually very therapeutic. You know, just sitting there, just sweating out and drinking lots of water, that is my switch off. So that, that, that and by the time I get out there, you know, I get out there from probably eight, half eight, nine o'clock sometimes, come in, have a big evening meal, I'm done, you know, I'm ready for bed. But I watch a bit of TV with the wife, cuddle up, and I'm, I'm just ready for bed straight away. So there's, there's, there's no worry with me turning off, that's for sure. <laughs> that's good though, because a lot of people do really struggle to switch off at night. Um, and in particular, the, the kind of lifestyle that we're all leading right now. So what do you think right now is the biggest anxiety pusher that people have? What's the biggest anxiety causer? The biggest anxiety causer right now, I mean, it's got to be watching the news. It's got to be, you know, keeping up with social media, all this scaremongering, all these, all the riots, all the people getting robbed and killed and stabbed, the COVID, you know, you see people uh, in hospitals, all the reports on the COVID. Um, so, th I mean, there's so much. You, you flick through your phone on Instagram and Facebook right now, um, you can drive yourself insane, absolutely insane. So I, I purposely try and, like, I don't watch any news. My wife watches the highlights and then keeps me updated. Um, I've just kept, I've completely like turned off with this, all the rioting and everything that's going on. I just, I, I just don't want to hear or see any of it. I'm just, and if you see anything, just flick it away. I, I'm just done with all that because it, it's stressing me out and it's stress I don't need in my life right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. It's just that negative vibe and that negative mindset for people is just not good, especially if they've already got these anxiety traits, they shouldn't be watching things like that. I mean, I'll tune in once a week to hear Boris and his updates on what he's doing and not doing. But other than that, that's it. I don't, I don't bother with the news at all. Whereas I think the older generation literally will sit there and watch the news all the time. Yes, yeah, very bad for your mental health. In terms of myself and the way that I will deal with anxiety, I, not now, obviously, but I would normally go to the gym. I would normally exercise. I would take part in my bodybuilding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is exercise a decrease or an increase for your anxiety? Oh, definitely a decrease. You know, getting in the gym and working out is something that definitely makes me feel better, gets rid of all my aggression, any worries, any stresses. I just put it into the iron. So, you know, and I'm quite lucky. I've got a home gym. Um, I've got a great setup, got weights, got boxing room, it's you know got a big garden to do my cardio in, so very lucky really. So I'm, I haven't had any issues whatsoever in terms of getting my workouts in during the, all this, this lockdown situation. So, And it definitely, 100%, every time I do a workout, I feel better about myself. So it's something that's really helped me through my entire life, not just now. So I kind of feel like we've covered quite a bit on anxiety, mental health, um, things like that. Is there any advice that you'd want to give to people regards to their mental health or reducing their anxiety or you want to ask me anything um, that I could give to your listeners? So, I mean, this is something I've done, done out for my entire life is keep yourself busy. And I know that's an easy thing to say, but people that sit down and mope and watch TV and put Netflix on and, you know, just feel sorry for themselves, they're the people that are going to get worse. They're the people that are just going to go backwards in life. I, it's all about goal setting for me. And, the, you know, it could be a tiny goal. And like I just said, you know, it could be a tiny goal like do an hour's power walk today. It could be a goal of clean the attic out. It could be anything. But for me, it's goal setting. And it doesn't matter how little those goals are. As long as you've got goals to chase, that's keeping your mind busy. And obviously, if it's physical, it's keeping your body busy. So it could be, I don't know, it could be something as simple as, Get your, get your bicep measurements up to 20 inches. So you're gonna do your biceps every day. Uh, get your waist down to 40 inches. So you're gonna go power walking and running every day. So goal setting for me has been my, 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 my void filler throughout my entire life. It's always been my fix for anxiety and depression. And it still is now. And 
anyone that I sort of work with, I have worked with, um, that is what I would say to them. And nine times out of 10, that, that's, that, that is the fix. Keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself active, keeping yourself fit. I don't think there's any better cure. I mean, there's all these medications and sort of treatments for depression, but honestly, like rewind 90, well, 17, 18 years when I, when I was diagnosed with depression, if they just said to me the best cure was exercise, I would have told them to F off as well. You know, it's just, it doesn't seem uh, the right thing, but it genuinely is. For me, I believe that is the, the number one thing for, for, for anxiety and depression. Keep yourself busy. Busyness, perfect. Little short term, medium term and long term goals are so key for people. I, I have a big wall of all my goals everything I've got and I, I keep mine where it's an education goal, a learning goal, a physical goal and a social goal because I always forget about the social side of things. So yeah. I think for me is to make sure that you've got that social circle there of people that you can trust, people that you can talk to, that you can offload your emotions to, whether you're an emotional person or not, depending on the oxytocin yeah. gene that you've got. Um, offloading to people is so important for them. No, definitely, yeah. Right, Lucy, well, thank you so much for your time. It's always great to chat to you and some great pointers there with mental health and the on-off switches and everything. So Mudo, uh, guys, I've got a mental health mode added onto the app. So, I mean, if you want it, honestly, like, I, I never say this enough, really, is that people will invest in all sorts of things in life, cars, holidays, um, but they never invest in their health. And the Mudo kit, of, you know, it, it's literally, it's, it's not a lot of money and you can learn so much from it. Absolutely so much. So the link's in my description. Um, hit it up, get your kit going, get download the app. And honestly, like the amount you will learn off the back of this app is absolutely phenomenal. Have you downloaded the app, Lucy? I've got the app. I've got all my health insights. You know what? You know what? You see, let's, you know what to work out. You know where you got it, what you eat, what you train, how long, yep. that sort of thing. It, it genuinely is amazing. So guys... Hit the link in the description. It's on my website, Mudo. Uh, use code Eddie50 for 50% off. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to that channel. But for now, thank you for watching. Big love the beast. See you later.